right, we're live. So we've got both our um, in-person audience here at the Siena Art Institute. It's so great to have you all here. And we'll be getting some online viewers joining us as well as they start to see the notification. Uh, so it's wonderful to have you all with us for tonight's conversation with our current resident artist, Sang Yu Chin. So he's not just here as our guest speaker tonight, but he's been here for this month-long residency at the Siena Art Institute. So it's wonderful to have him here as part of our community. He's been joining along with some of our activities with our students uh, as they've been exploring Siena, so has he, and finding inspiration to create um, different responses. So I think it'll be really interesting to not only hear about his backgrounds, but also to hear a bit about what he's been creating during his time here in Siena, which I think can really also connect to what our students have been doing during their time here as well. Um, so we certainly welcome um, comments or questions, both from our uh, in-person audience, as well as people who are joining us online. Uh, for our online viewers, you're very welcome to write any comments or questions in the comment section, and we can take some time at the end of today's talk to respond to those. Um, just before we begin, I'd like to share a few notes about tonight's speaker. So um, Zheng Yuqin began his creative career as an experimental filmmaker in Taiwan. After repeated pressures from the Taiwanese government to use his success as a filmmaker to promote political agendas, he chose to leave Taiwan, and he currently lives in Amsterdam and Berlin with his partner. His experiences of homophobic discrimination and victimization as a teen and young man led him to a deep understanding of the oppression of authority. His lived experiences have focused his artistic research on the conflict of self-consciousness, which he explores through video art production and extended cinema, in addition to his work that he's done as a director, curator, and photographer as well. In terms of his educational background, he studied in the MFA program of the Graduate Institute of Arts and Technology of Taipei National University of the Arts. Among his many accomplishments, in 2007, he was a featured artist in Documenta 12 in Kassel, Germany. And um, in, he was the 2008 Best Young Artist of the CCAA Chinese Contemporary Art Awards. He was awarded the Best Art Video for the 2019 South Film and Arts Academy Festival in Chile. In 2020, he was awarded the special prize of the 14th edition of the Art Laguna Prize. He received the 2020 Golden Cow Award at the Gestat Film Festival in Switzerland. He won the Best Experimental Short at the 2020 Amsterdam Independent Film Festival and received a directing award from the Lisbon Cinefest in 2021. He was awarded Best Experimental Film at the 2021 Roma Short Film Festival in, here in Italy, in Rome. And just this year, he won the 2023 Best Experimental Films Award at the Munich New Wave Short Film Festival, the 2023 Best Performance Award at the Innuendo International Film Festival in Milan, and winner of the 2023 Best Silent Film at the Milano Blackout Film Fest, also in Milan, uh, just to name a few of his many recognitions. Uh, in addition to his current artistic residency here at the Siena Art Institute, his previous residencies have taken him to Japan, Germany, Paris, and New York. Again, we really welcome comments and questions, and we'll save time at the end of today's talk to respond to those both for our in-person audience as well as those of you who are joining us online. But without further ado, I'll turn off my microphone so we can pass the microphone off to our today's speaker. So thank you so so I can see. Yes. yes. Hi, I'm uh, Yu Qing Zheng, and in Mandarin, I'm Zheng Yu Qing. It's different kind of, kind of pronounce. And I'm from Asia. Normally, now I don't like to say I'm from Taiwan. <laughs> and I live in Rotterdam, Netherlands with my partner. I'm a video artist. <clears throat> Let's start it. Um, Every time we talk about art, art itself will fade away or die a little bit. Because uh, it's kind of like we go to a funeral. And when we go to a funeral, we will hear that, oh, I remember what. And uh, I, uh, we will talk about something that, oh, is something interesting happened before or something, uh, what exactly uh, remind to us 
So it's kind of like when we talk about our artwork, it's kind of like just talk about talk talk on the funeral that. So, but it's different kind of funeral. Is when we go to the funeral is because it's someone you care about or someone is related to or someone you want to get money from them. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> but but in the art, uh, you couldn't get so much things if you just just watch. You have to think and so. Uh, after I talk about what, what I'm doing, why I'm to be an artist, it's a little bit sad or something unpleasant moment happened. But it's based on the true story, me. And so let's just see the first video. Um, This is the documentary job in Kassel, in Germany. And this is me. Yes, behind me is Ai Weiwei. This is known as one of the world's most important exhibitions. Look how happy this boy is smiling at that moment. I'm in one of the most important art exhibitions in the world. Of course I'm happy. But how did I end up like this? However, when I was a child, I wanted to be a shipper on the hill for a while. I started playing with photography at college. And then I got my first DV camcorder and I started creating video clips. It took me four years to make three experimental show films to discuss the huge pool about identity, genders, life, and body. has also become the foundation of all my future works. I use the concept of theaters and film extensively in my video works. Everything in the video, from the character to the colors, the sounds, the object, the creature, the smokes, the details, everything is there for a purpose. Afterwards, I feel overwhelmed but began to feel very interested in the disorder of the self-consciousness of all people in each moment. And I try to make my works lighter. So I finished my video works, who is listening? <laughs>
I started by using children as a character to create conflict, hiding the emotions and thought in a seemingly simple but more complex context. Then I saw that the visual frameworks of the lightness was complete, and I began to fill in a lot of context of make the lightness progressively heavier. At that moment, my life and existence changed even more when I returned to my home country from a documentary in Germany. But I was not recognized by my own countries and even tried to overshadow my existence. So, I feel even more strongly the disorder of all kinds and the tragic nature of one's existence as a human being. I don't just use videos, I also draw in and photograph it in my works. There are also some installation works to become intertwined, like the concept of musical compositions, so that the mediums echo each other. In fact, it's a continuous experimentation of being a human being in every self-feedback discussion. What am I here for? What am I really doing? What have I done to get to this state? And we are all going to die. And that's where the end and the nonsense will always be. So we are constantly in physical tortures and the poor way our spiritual. We live in this world. This is the documentary too. Well, in Taiwan and a lot of curators or a lot of reporters asked me why I want to be an artist. That time I couldn't say the truth because there's a lot of things I couldn't say or I don't want to say. And when I leave Taiwan, I saw a lot, maybe I should say something true about what really happened to me. So this is the first time I speak in public. Uh, I, I will speak with other journalists, but this is the one time I speak in public. So uh, a lot of artists will say that, yes, I want to be an artist when I was a child or, or I just like to imagine everything in my life. Of course, in, in, when I was a child, I like to imagine everything. It's you, you just kind of like you're hiding in a very peaceful and quiet space and you feel very happy in that space. And, but um, when I was a little boy, my parents was a very straight and very um, uptight person, maybe too serious. And I always remember what really happened, but I couldn't speak before that, but now I can speak. And this uh, one time, because uh, my mother and my parents uh, asked their friends to uh, the other friends and th their family, we have a dinner party, party at the Japanese restaurant. And they, they really talk very seriously. My parents very serious. They so they will talk very serious. And I was just a little boy. I feel very impatient on that moment. I feel very boring at that moment. So I just imagined the picture in my mind, my parents and their their friends, their head to bump each other, <laughs> just bumping again and again. And but they just keep talking very serious topic. And it's just like a cartoon in my 
in my head and I feel very funny. So I just start to laugh and, and start laughing louder and louder. And my mother just very, very angry about this. She tried to stop me. So I only remember that my mother just stared at me and, and just madly slapped my face and till my mouth bleed. So yes, <laughs> and that's my family. It's very, a lot of things happen at that moment. And, but that thing is always in my mind because it's in the public and you just only saw that and your mother losing control at the moment. And I just, um, one thought in my mind just, oh, uh, imagination could get hurt by by passively, passively or actively. So I just feel that, oh, uh, I should keep in my imagination in my mind. I couldn't choose to do too much. And, but at that moment, I feel, I know that I've, I've been fascinated about the people losing control because that imagery is very violent, but I don't know why I feel very fascinating when I was just a boy and I feel, wow, why is that? I want to know that. <laughs> so um, at that, when I'm just a little boy and I just like to watch every moment when people are losing control or just fade away in the public. And I feel that, wow, that's so beautiful for me. And, but at that moment when I just, gazing that kind of moment, I will image what kind of things happen to that person. Is the sadness things or just someone passed away or maybe he just tired. And every image, imagination in my mind just kind of like a fragment and a kind of a lot of layer to, to, to build up a, a story in my, in my, my head. So I feel very safe to in that environment. So uh, when I graduated from high school, I got uh, sex abuse uh, very seriously by a stranger, but I couldn't tell anyone at the moment, especially in Asia, it's, uh, you couldn't speak out loud. And so that time nobody knows. So I go to college and and when I went to college, I got serious bullet from my classmate because I'm a gay. And even I bullied by the professor. The professor want me to, at the class, to speak out my fascinate about men. And even they, they didn't got my permission. And I feel very, very angry. And um, so they, my classmates, even they um, spread my rumors about I got AIDS or I'm, I'm a whore. <laughs> and they even um, write on the college um, pu uh, public website and they just write that this word. you better kill yourself. And at that time, I, I feel very, very depressed why they hate me. And my mother had the same way to me because she had a hunch that maybe I'm gay. So at a dinner, I always remember that time at the dinner, my mother just look at me and she say, maybe. If you are gay, I will kill your boyfriend be before I kill you, and then I will kill myself. And I always remember this word, and I know that I couldn't speak anything to anyone because uh, 
I started to online to make friends and I try to say something what really happened to stranger because the people around me, they don't believe me. So I try to say that, and but nobody believe me. And they think that he just make up and he just, he just a, a, a crazy little young boy. He just want to get attention. So that time, I, I just learned something from very roughly from that if you make art, you could help yourself. You could um, express something that nobody knows, but you still could say something. So I started to make a lot of uh, works and maybe this one, yeah. So I make a lot. So my work is humongous. I already make maybe hundreds of work. So I make a lot of work and just to say something what really happened. So you saw that in, in the video before, I make free experimental uh, film about what I'm really happened. And, and especially, it's very interesting that everybody saw that they feel, wow, what is that? It's so interesting. But they don't know what exactly really happened. But I don't care because I, since that time, I know that nobody cares what really happened to you. They just, they just want to show what they want to see. I don't know in English is right. So uh, I just hiding in my imagination for a very, very long time. And I know that I could use imagination to practice in my artworks and I just to make again and again and again. So I make three experimental movie. And after that, I make a, a very famous video, just you saw before. Let's see. Thank <laughs> you. 
Kids have a free chapter, and I really honored that they at the Documenta 12, they collab this uh, first chapter and the five chapter in the Documenta. Does anyone know about Documenta? Here, okay, I could explain a little bit. Okay, it's a little bit educated. <laughs> Documenta is, uh, there are three uh, largest, uh, most important Biennale in the world. One is here in uh, Venice Biennale. And the other one is uh, San Paolo Biennale from Basel. And the other one, just this one, is Documenta Cassel in German. And this one is most important because there's only five, five years of time. And they will collect maybe 100 artists in the whole world in this for this exhibition. And in Taiwan, uh, Taiwan is never on the list. And uh, before me is maybe 50 years ago, 50 years ago. So it's a whole generation. So I'm kind of like an accident to choose because it's another story. It's a very long story. <laughs> so. Uh, after I uh, from Documenta and 
a lot of people notice me, especially from the video, because my video is very powerful at that time. A lot of a lot of curator, a lot of, um, of institution, they try to find me. Uh, it, it, it's already 50, 15 years ago. And I was very young and, but that time the Facebook is not so popular. So they try to find me, they will find the government and or find the institution in Taiwan. But when they find me, the government and the institution will say that we don't know this artist. And, or they will say he's dead. Yeah, after that I know that I feel very shivering about this because they just kind of like to uh, mute me at that moment. I couldn't say too much because the time limit and um, I just say one thing because just one major thing. At that time, uh, when I um, go back to Taiwan, they send a very important, because Taiwan is very small, just an island. They, the government could control everything. And, but nobody knows. And they send a very important curator to me and they just, she said that, could you abandon your, your the way you make art to question about government or question about the society? And we want you to do some video to promote our government is very, uh, how to say? very equal, very freedom. And do we want you to promote this? And I say no at that time. So that's a major thing. And they just mute me almost 15 years, 15 years. <laughs> so I couldn't get really uh, great uh, results at the moment. And I just suddenly disappeared in the, the stage on the international outward. And nobody knows what exactly really happened because nobody knows that Taiwan is not a free country. <laughs> yes, when I say that, I, I'm a little bit scared, but it's a true. And, and everything in Taiwan is under control. And so, uh, but, they have to show they are, they are a free country. So I I could go go run away from our country, it's fine, because they just want you to go away. We don't want you to in our country, yes. So I've been through a lot of things and I just make a lot of artwork and I just showed one second, just, okay. So I'm here and I make a, take a lot of photographs because I said that my, my imagination just kind of like fragment and a, a lot of layer to do this. Yes. So, yeah. This, what I make here. Is uh, because I, when I go to a residency, I will take a lot of photographs and I know that's uh, especially for digital photograph, it's not so so uh, uh, precious or it's very, we could, especially here in Siena, we could see uh, on the website, there are thousands of, maybe more than thousands of pictures about Siena. So you don't have to take too much about Siena, you could see a lot of building up there. So. For me, I just take a lot of picture and I just, just like a trash and I just uh, throw a lot of dirt, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, oil, a lot of spread on it and just make it like, just uh, how I feel about the world. It's not for the Siena, it's for the whole world. It's when I go to the Leipzig in, in German, just under the Berlin, I make the uh, some kind of like same take, same technique of the photograph, and I just to express how I see the world. It's a lot of fog, or a lot of disturbing things around you, and you, you couldn't run away. So this is what I do here. Yeah. 
So it's quick finish. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, it's great. Yeah. So it's uh, 42 drawing. For me, I just say that it's drawing because I want to respect the painter because it's not a painting. It's kind of like drawing. Yes. Yeah. But they are very fragile. <laughs> Are so, fragile because of the materials that you're using? Uh, because uh, the original is a photograph, but I just, I have a small printer for myself and I print it out and I'm very familiar with the ink. And so I play a, a little bit with the ink because the ink, they could be dissolved a little or maybe just make it some temperature or maybe some thing they will be different kind of texture on the photograph and you just do it that way to change the the way the ink to show on the photo on the paper and and I just make something different on it yes I know my background is a little bit sad, but I always I always know one thing that uh, when I saw a, a I, I, I can remember the artist. The artist they, they have an interview and the artist said, um, if the, the audience only sympathy about you and nothing left. So I don't need any sympathy. I don't need any pity about about my past because for me it's already almost uh, fifteen years ago, and a lot of things happened. And for me, when I saw the video or maybe I saw the past my work, I I will remind some remind something in my mind. But for me, I just say, oh, interesting <laughs> because it's a really long time ago, and now I just focus what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. Two quick questions. One, um, the, the images. So you print them when they're oh. Yeah. Just only postcard. Uh -huh. yes. Oh, okay. yes. And when you exhibit them, you exhibit many? Um, yes, but um, because it's just kind of like material, I'm not finished yet. So yeah, I'm, um, I asked Lisa before that there, there are a lot of graduation uh, graduation celebrate at the college and they will have a confetti confetti just spread around the the the, the row and I pick it up a lot a lot whole bag and when I friend the each picture I will throw some confetti on the friend so there will be a lot of uh, pieces things to happen on the friend so you will so that you you will see that what exactly will happen on the, after the friend mm -hmm. yes i could send the picture when i go back to rotterdam <laughs> i don't have to finish and um, in rotterdam yes <laughs> Work in progress, or are you planning to put more layers on top, more confetti, or are they resolved as compositions? What you're sharing? Um, the this, this part is already finished, but uh, my work's always finished after the framing because it was so on my website. This uh, some of my work is I have a friend, and when I'm in Taiwan, this I have different friends. But when I had to run away from Taiwan, I throw away all the friends. So I buy new ones in Rotterdam. So they're the new, new, new friend to make the works. So I like to work with the tape, the, how to say that, to boxing the tape. Yeah, so it, they all used by tape, not the, Special things, yes. They are old tape, yes. And this old tape, I like to work with tape. And 
it's very fascinating about that because it's kind of like stealing something that you I, you don't want to let anybody knows, but you still want to say something. So you just <laughs> cover it up. Yeah. So that's how I make. Yes. So if you're interested, you could uh, go to my website. There's a lot of work, and now I put all the video on my website. And when Taiwan, a lot of people said it's very dangerous, and they will they will took away your your video. It's very dangerous, and I always say that I don't care <laughs> because I'm I'm not a commercial artist because my work is. Purely sell. Nobody sell. Want to buy my artwork? So I don't care. So I just make a lot of work and a lot of video. And now I just put it on the internet. So if you're interested, you could take a look. Yes. Okay. Are there questions? Yeah. There's one in the back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, actually, I have one. Yeah. Uh, if I miss that part, um, sorry, I have to read a minute. Um, you are using red and white color uh, in the picture. Uh, is there any meaning of this color for you? Hmm. And uh, actually, at, at the video you show us, uh, including children, you are showing the white color on their faces. And the pictures you are revising, um, you are uh, putting just there, just the head of the people, white yeah. coloring. Uh, is there a connecting idea uh, about this white coloring? Yes. Am I explaining well? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But <laughs> it's a long story. I, I, I will make it short. And because for me, uh, red, white, and black, they all have the different kind of aspect for me because white just kind of, when you, I, this is a small story. When you in under the sun, the sun is very warm and you just lie on the grass and you just close your eyes. You just only saw white in your eyes and your mind will fade away and you will feel nothing about the warm. And, but it's kind of like that for me. You know, somebody fade away or gone away. And so it's a little bit um, comp to say something about uh, jump out or something about uh, death for me. It's a little bit romantic way for myself. But for black, it's for me, it's kind of like when we saw a black and when you closer and closer to see the black, you will see a lot of texture in the black because I think the black is not only just a black. Black is kind of a mix, a lot of different kind of things to let you see just only black. And so the red is kind of emotion or kind of protect for myself. So it's kind of three different kind of color for me. It's different kind of meaning for me. So it's a little bit personal, but I like to work with this kind of free color. So you saw my work is almost this free color. Yeah. Thank you. Great question. Any other questions? Okay. Of course, continue the conversation over some snacks as well. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, thank you all so much for um, for being here, and I'm really looking forward to continuing to chat over some snacks here. But thank you also for our online viewers joining us. And um, definitely, I would encourage you all, um, if you haven't already, to check out um, his website, which is just um, his name, so it's <coughs> yuqin.com. Or you can also find him on Instagram at howl underscore, or howl underscore, howl, 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 howl. howl. <laughs> uh, So you can find him also on Instagram, because he has really a very extensive archive of his previous work, obviously with time-based work, for a short talk this evening, we're only getting a glimpse of a really very vast um, archive of his previous projects. So definitely, I'd encourage you all to check them out. But thank you so much for sharing this glimpse into your work. It's thank really you. Been a pleasure.